Now, uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, in law enforcement in the U.S. and how their role may be changing and their power expanding. We've shown you image after image of police using pepper spray on seemingly peaceful protesters. So pepper spray has, uh, seems to have become the weapon of choice. But that's just the beginning of what police have in their arsenal these days, thanks to a program out of the Pentagon, one that not very many people know about. Local police are getting their hands on weapons and equipment from the military. The 2011 Department of Defense forked over $500 million worth of military machinery to local police. Police department. So is the government gearing up for Main Street to rise up? From our New York studio, writing fellow for the National Institute, Max Blumenthal joins us now. Welcome, Max. Um, so pepper Good spray, as we've seen, is, is the weapon of choice for police these days um, based on, uh, on the video uh, coming out of these Occupy Wall Street protests. Um, what else is law enforcement getting their hands on these days? Well, first of all, I'm from the Nation Institute. I have to say that for my funders. But uh, speaking of police funding, uh, police have, as you said, just this year in 2011, received half a billion dollars in surplus military weaponry from the Pentagon, um, which is authorized through the Pentagon's 1033 program. Um, during the late 70s, Congress passed legislation uh, called Posse Comitatus, barring the military from operating on American soil. And in the early 80s, there was an effort to circumvent that in Congress by arming police with military-grade weaponry. And now we're seeing that play out in the streets. People in the inner city in the U.S. have been experiencing this um, since the 80s. And now middle-class um, Americans at, in the Occupy movement are facing not only pepper spray, but things like the LRAD sound cannon, the long-range acoustic device, which can blast your cranium with 140 decibels, shaking your skull so hard even earplugs won't stop it. And as I reported for Al Akbar English, this weapon has been tested on Palestinians in the occupied West Bank by the Israeli army. So civilians in the U.S. are now up against basically uh, military-style policing. Um, so as you, I, so um, it sounds like you are calling this a militarization of the police force. Um, why is it happening and what is behind it? Well, it's been happening since the war on drugs. Um, and what's behind it is a mentality um, among our police forces, our local police, um, that views um, common civilians, protesters, and common criminals, or as common criminals. And as I reported for Al Akbar English in my piece, The Israelification of American Domestic Security, um, the former head of the Israeli Shin Bet Intelligence Services, Avi Dichter, who's accused of war crimes against the Palestinians, uh, spoke beside FBI Director Robert Mueller at a police convention, at a, co at a convention before 11,000 top law enforcement officers. And after Mueller called Dichter his mentor in counterterrorism, Dichter urged American police to see the, 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 um, the, to view their opponents, those they seek to arrest, as crimi-terrorists. In other words, to blur the line between common criminals and terrorists. So what we're seeing is not only a legal blurring of the lines between criminals, terrorists, and protesters, but something in the mindset of American policing and in their training um, in which the civilian population is viewed as a hostile and menacing force that can be acted against with military-grade weaponry. Um, but why uh, are we seeing this attempt to crack down on, on everyday civilians? Um, why is this over? Why are we seeing this overwhelming police response to peaceful protesters? Almost, I mean, you, you're calling it like this military reaction. It's almost as if we're in a war zone and, and they're responding to terrorist threats. Why treat civilians like they're terrorists? Um, there's definitely a fear among, um, you know, <clears throat> Michael Bloomberg, the mayor of New York, has said um, that he feared that the Occupy movement would gain too much of a foothold and would continue to expand. Um, and I was there at the raid on Zuccotti Park in downtown New York. And what I saw from the NYPD reminded me of um, demolitions I've witnessed by the Israeli army and the Israeli border police inside Israel and in the occupied West Bank. And as I reported, there's been, since 9-11, since the war on drugs transferred into the war on terror, 9,000 American police officers have been trained by Israeli security and intelligence officials. Hundreds of top law enforcement officers have gone to Israel to train. And what they're learning there is 
um, counter-terror training by a, a country that has spent 63 years dispossessing and controlling an indigenous population. Now they're bringing that back into the streets in the United States against the civilian population. Um, so you, you're seeing a process since the war on terror of Israelification. Um, and this is extremely dangerous in terms of uh, what it means for the relationship between civilians and their protection under um, established civil liberty codes. Now, Max, um, who benefits from, from this militarization of the police force? I know Occupy Wall Street, they would say not the 99 percent. Um, certainly not the 99 percent, certainly not the police, because police have to do community work. Um, and what we've seen is a counter-terror creep in our local police forces through a program called JTTF, or the Joint Terrorism Task Force, where the FBI and even the CIA are able to come in and dictate to local police forces um, what, how they can treat, monitor, and spy on local populations. The NYPD, as I reported and as the Associated Press reported, has set up what it calls a demographics unit, and this is following Police Commissioner Ray Kelly's several trips to Israel. Um, where they monitor, they've monitored virtually all areas of Muslim life in the United States. Um, so clearly, um, they've gone beyond uh, protecting civilians. It's not, it's not clear exactly um, who they're guarding, but with respect to the Occupy Wall Street, if you go down there, and if you went down there when um, the encampment was intact at Zuccotti Park, they were protecting the financial institutions at Wall Street. But at the same time, there's, there's, sim there's simply a, an effort by federal law enforcement to take the reins of local law enforcement, to corrupt local law enforcement, destroy the relationship between civilians and the police, and to treat civilians as um, criminals, if not terrorists, or as Avi Dichter, FBI Director Robert Mueller's so-called mentor said, crime terrorists. I want to ask you because in some ways it, it doesn't really make sense. We've pointed out on RT before that these police officers, they're part of the 99 percent. So, so why are they engaging in these hostilities against their neighbors, their friends, um, their, their community? It, you know, that, that goes to the mentality of just following orders. Uh, I've seen chants um, during Occupy Wall Street demonstrations at the police asking them to, um, to join the protesters, and that's simply impossible um, and disregards uh, the, the position that police are put in. They're basically working people. So what this, what, what this really goes to and what I'm trying to show through my reporting is the mentality of federal law enforcement um, leaders like FBI Director Robert Mueller and Ray Kelly, who has bragged that um, he has a weapon that can shoot down a combat jet, um, of militarizing their police forces and putting police officers who are working people, who are members of local communities, in impossible positions where they have to treat their neighbors as criminals and terrorists or crime terrorists. And this, and this demographics unit that I mentioned that the NYPD has set up, and by the way, the NYPD refuses to disclose the CIA refuses to disclose the name of the former CIA Middle East station chief who is in the senior ranks of the demographics unit. This is the level of coordination. They depend on Muslims in Muslim communities to spy on Max, Palestinian um, Americans and Pakistani Americans. Thank you so much for, uh, we are out of time unfortunately, but thank you so much for weighing in. That was Writing Fellow for the Nation Institute, Max Blumenthal.